Hey, Nathan here, and welcome back to another tutorial covering the Tower Defense Engine. And in this tutorial, we're going to discuss the Wave class. Now, I already copied and pasted the writer and the reader over, but I commented it out. So that way we can worry about our properties and our function headers, method headers. And then I'll uncomment this, and I'll discuss the coding behind it. Alright, so for the using statements at the top, just make sure you add microsoft.xna.framework, microsoft.xna.framework.content, and the long one, microsoft.xna.framework.content.pipeline.serialization.compiler. That's a long thing to have as a using statement. Uh, just make sure you have those, and uh, the standard C-sharp ones should be fine. Uh, System.collections.generic. Because we have a list going on. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with the properties. Alright, so first thing, what is a wave? It's basically a, it holds the monsters that, each wave has a different monster set. So we'll have a list of monsters. Now, we do not want to have a list of monsters in the XML. We want to have the asset of the monsters, the strings of the monsters. The only thing we really want to load directly from the XML is when we have derivatives in the case of the monster and the gameplay object. We load the gameplay object in the XML itself. And in the case of the tower, we have tower statistics and upgrade statistics. Those will be in the XML file. Anything else, like if we want the wave to load a monster or something like that, something completely different. A monster is in no way related to a wave other than a monster is in the wave, if that makes any sense. So in that case, we just want to have the asset name for that monster, and then we will load the monster using that asset name. So with that being said, we will have a property here, and we will serialize it, and it will be a private list of strings. Well, not actually say strings. It's a list of type string, and it is monster asset. Get and set. All right, now we will ignore the actual what that turns into which is a list of monsters, list of type monster. Public list type monster, monsters. All right, now let's also ignore again. And the list of monsters will hold the active monsters in the list. When you kill a monster, it's removed from this monster's list. Now, when we do, when we quit or die on the game, the level, rather we win or lose, we want to have the option to play it again. Now, to make it easier, we do not have to reload the map and then reload all the towers and all the monsters. We just call that reset, and that will reset everything. So when you kill a monster, it will be removed from this monster's list up here. But we also need to be keeping track of it in another list. And in that case, I created another list called All Monsters. So it's a list of type monster, All Monsters. Get and set. It's private access. The only thing that will use it is the wave class itself. Okay, so just like the screen system tutorials and uh, a few other things, we will have, when we destroy the monster, it gets added to the list of monsters to remove. So at the very beginning of the update cycle, it will remove all the monsters that are in this public list of type monster monsters to remove
And that's actually going to be protected set. All right, content serializer ignore. We will ignore every wave needs to be aware of its map. This wave belongs to this map, so it needs to be aware of a map. And we will ignore it because we do not want to have the map in the XML. Alright. Now every wave has a dedicated path it'll follow. Uh, for this game, up until version probably 2.0, we have a set path. In version 2.0, I'll activate A star for every single instance that we do not have a dedicated path, it will automatically use A star. But for now, it has a dedicated path. Get and then let's just put a semicolon in there. It'll only have git for right now. Uh, let's put a comment. Needs to be implemented after map. All right. Now the informational part, like t is it the wave title? Is it a boss wave? The timer that it monsters spawn, the money per kill, and all that stuff. We will need to add those in there right now. So we will serialize those. Content serializer. Public string title. Whatever we, we want to call the wave. Private set. And then boss wave. That will be a boolean. Public bool boss wave remember for now things are set in a semi-static way that a boss wave will identify it as if I kill a monster I'll get double the money if a monster reaches my house or the destination I'll lose twice the lives Content serializer and the spawn timer. How far we want the monsters to be apart when they spawn. Just getting set for that one. Uh, money per kill. That is handled on the wave side, not the monster side. Oops. Integer will be the money. I can't type today. I apologize. I have a few things in my way, my notes, so... Alright, here's where we set the boss scaler. Public float boss money scaler so here is where we can set the scaler you can change that if you want to I set it as 2.0 so I get twice the money and that will be serialized now one final property if the wave is done we need to identify it as done so that's going to be ignored because that's determined based on the state of the wave. Public bool is done. Get and protected set. All right, so now let's go ahead and start the methods. Public wave. Uh, that was the constructor. Public void initialize. We need to have a way to initialize the wave and we need to pass it the map so it knows what map it belongs to. Public void update. We need to have an update so we can update all the monsters. And of course we need a game time. Any update where we have game time. Alright. Uh, remove. When we want to remove a monster 
we'll call public void remove monster m. And then the reset method I've mentioned a few minutes ago. Okay, so now at the very bottom of the game, you will notice that we have a list of waves coming up. It shows you the active wave on the far left, and then the waves coming up as we go towards the right side. That is done by using the public override and two strain method, and we'll worry about that later on. And that just gives us a way to output the wave as a strain value so we can get the most critical information that we choose. Alright, so that's it for the methods. Let me uncomment these writers and readers and I'll discuss how that is being handled. Okay, so we have a list of strain values that are called monster assets. Now that will be in the XML file. And to, in order to do that, we have output.write object and then value.monster assets. So for the list, we have write object. For everything else, we have write. So we want to write the we want to write object the monster assets, and we want to write the following value.title, value.bosswave, value.monster spawn timer, value.money per kill and value.bossMoneyScaler. Now for the reader, we read the list of strings. Now we do this in a certain a way to where it will populate the list, which is the monster assets list. So we call wave.monsterassets.addRange, and then we call input.readObject, and then the object we want it to read, which is a list of string values. All right, so then we have monster m is equal to null, and then for each string in this list, we need to dot load the monster and where the monsters are being stored, and then we load it into m, and then we call m.clone here. Remember, this creates a cache of what we load, so we need to call dot clone so we get a completely new object. Now those objects might share a few things, like two monsters would share the same textures, same texture objects. So we add m.clone to the monsters list and we add it again to the all monsters list. Now it doesn't matter if they're not referencing the same object. The all monsters list will only be used when we call the dot reset method. So these lines don't really, it doesn't really matter. We are not referencing the same monster object here. These two lists are pointing to two different objects. That does not really matter. It can point to the same one, uh, but it, it really doesn't matter. Because we will clone it again when we do the dot .reset method. Then everything else is read string, read boolean, read single, read int, and then read single. Then we return the wave. So those are the writers and readers, and we did the properties, and we started the method headers. So this is part one of the wave, and that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. Uh, next tutorial, we will go on to tower statistics and upgrade statistics. I'll probably separate those into two tutorials, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks, and have a good night.